I turn to my right and say hello to my colleague from the NFL Network, NFL Media Group, covering the Cowboys expertly for us. Good to see you, Jane Slater. How are you? Good to see you. Glad to see your lair when you're not at the NFL Network. This is my non-network lair. This is the ultimate man cave. This is what the NFL Network would look like if they just let me have my way. I mean, I saw yeah. that welcome letter from 2003 in the dressing room. From I mean, right? I mean, you are grandfathered in. I would imagine that you would get your druthers over there. You know, I just turned 50, so to be called grandfathered in any way, shape, don't or take form that, is Don't take that the wrong way. Right I'm already going to get booted. You know, this segment's going to be short. No, it's all right. It's all right. Um, good to see you. You're heading up to Oxnard later yeah. today, right? Cowboys are on their way right now, right? They are. You know, and I love it. That PCH drive every year. <laughs> it's such a treat. Yeah. I, I know that I've got the glamour beat when it comes to covering the Cowboys in Oxnard, and then Jerry does this Nobu party yes, for that's the media right. every year. I, I think you've been a couple of times. I know. Vince Vaughn showed up a couple years back, but, I mean, there's nothing like covering that team. There it, really isn't. I wasn't at the one that Vince was at. I was at the one where I absolutely elbowed Gil Brandt out of the way from a uh, baked crab hand roll. It was Sweet very, it was, <laughs> it was very uh, unfortunate, but you can't get between me and my favorite baked crab hand roll. Gil Brandt is amazing, isn't he? He's going in the hall I mean, next it, week. The, he is so on it. The way that he can rattle off stats and information and players is like absolutely fascinating to me. He knows Abraham Lincoln's 40 time off the top of his head. That is a fact. Julius Caesar, Four, six, five. His, his, his leap at the vertex, his toga got in the way, so they had to reevaluate. Re, re 36 inches for Julius. So the plane is out in the air now? The Cowboys plane is in the air? It's taking off, I believe, at 1 o'clock Dallas time. Dallas time. So. so hour number three on this Rich Eisen show, will we know if Zeke's on that plane or not? Do we know? Potentially. Now, a couple of the Cowboys end up coming out here ahead of camp. Okay. Like Tyron Smith has done it in the past. I know Zeke has done it in the past. Uh, so we may or may not have our answers, but I'm going to be stationed in front of the camp facility. So I'll be able to let you know on NFL Network if Zeke is, in fact, on the plane. But talking to a bunch of the people, people in the building, sources that I consider to be very strong ones, yes. they all believe that Zeke is going to show up. In fact, he's said that to a few people. So I truly believe that this was his team, mm -hmm. management team, wanting him in the conversation of Dak and Amari. Now, you and I have kind of talked about this. The timing is is interesting to me, mm -hmm. given that he got called the principal's office again. And the Cowboys, I mean, when I think the about- The commissioner's principal the, office. The again, principal's yes. office, right. right. The fact that Jerry Jones, who had been feted in the Hall of Fame, weeks later was going on the record and defending his running back mm -hmm. the way that he did uh, and really stuck with him. And even this summer when this Vegas incident happened, Stephen Jones went out of his way to say, but look what he's done in the community. So he's had a little bit of carte blanche in Dallas. And I don't know if it would make sense for them to, to push this thing. It's, it feels a little premature. Mm -hmm. I think we can all agree the Cowboys are going to, they, they know that he's a foundational player. They know that he's important to that offense He's going to get paid, but there are guys in front of him that I think they need to get done sooner. Well, I mean, there is a quarterback here. That's yeah. in the same. I mean, the Dak Zeke draft class totally changed the direction of this franchise. 100 percent. There's no arguing about that. So they both have to get at some point paid unless they have an issue with Zeke's off the field behavior. Like, as you just mentioned, being called to the principal, the, the mere fact, again, nothing happened, apparently. There is some sort of suit countersuit between Zeke and the individual that was part of security late night, but he's out and about in Vegas where things can happen. I don't need to tell anyone. All you got to do is just watch, you know, uh, any of the hangover movies. You could see anything can happen once, you know, midnight strikes. Um, I know nothing about that. Rich. Understood. Understood. <laughs> well, you've seen the hangover movies. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, no, but what I'm saying is, though, is that is that do the Cowboys, you think, have any hitch in their long-term signing giddy up with Zeke because of the off the field stuff. I mean, I think it's a factor, but it's a factor in anyone's job. I mean, if, if I had gotten called to the principal's office, you know, two times in my last four years with an organization, I said, not only thank you for dealing with all this, but now I want you to, to pay me long-term. Right. The timing feels a little off. Now, with that being said, the Cowboys, I'm told have an immense respect for Zeke. He is such a pro even when all of that stuff was going on with the suspension and the trial, the one thing I'll say about Zeke is he showed up to practice and he worked his tail off. He's the type of guy that literally puts his head down and gets to work. So when I heard about this holdout, it just felt like it was media spin to sort of push the discussion yeah. down the road. 
but I didn't truly believe, and I still don't believe, that Zeke's going to end up holding out. Okay. That's just what I believe, having covered him the last four years. Sure. So what about Dak? Why haven't the Cowboys pulled the trigger on Dak? We all know they have to sign him. We all know they're not going to let him walk. Are they going to take the uh, the Kirk Cousins Washington Redskins plan and go year to year and keep nah. franchising him? I mean, like, so what are the What's the holdup here? So I reached out to my sources yesterday on this, and they said they're optimistic this deal gets done in training camp. Uh, but it would have behooved them to probably have gotten this thing done before Carson went, right. because Carson obviously set the market. So they're going to have to pay him at least $30 million and over. But when you think about how cheap Dak has been playing the last couple of years and the fact that he was so impressive in his rookie campaign that Tony Romo didn't even get a chance to compete— it says to you the respect they have for this guy. And just watching him so far in OTAs and minicamp, he looks different. A lot of people have sort of like laughed at this idea of Kellen Moore and John Kitna taking over the offense. But Kitna is such a mechanics guy. It's put your foot here, put your elbow there. And they said that his mechanics in the pocket, he looks like a different player. And his body looks a lot more, you know, he's a large guy. Mm -hmm. I won't call him soft, but you know, we used to give Romo all the heat for that, <laughs> but he just looks like his conditioning yes. was that much more. As a matter of fact, earlier this week, I was told he was up there throwing the ball with guys like Jason Witten and Michael Gallup. So he stayed engaged this summer. Um, but I just, I don't think he's a type of guy you have to worry about. And I think he is going to benefit from Kellen Moore's creativity and John Kitna's emphasis on mechanics and the details. Jane Slater here on the Rich Eisen show. Okay. So you think Dak gets done training camp. Yep. Zeke's going to show up and get and go back to work and we'll figure out what the contract is when that hits. Right. What about Amari Cooper? That is the one thing that I can't seem to put my finger on. Amari Cooper's camp doesn't leak a lot. So I've been trying to get a handle on the Amari Cooper situation. He's the Kawhi of the NFL. Amari is the, is one of the most enigmatic, fascinating guys in that locker room. When you go to his locker, he doesn't say much. Mm -hmm. He's pretty quiet and he's playing chess with Shadobi Awuzie. And when you ask him to walk you through a particular play, he reminds me of Jordan Spieth. When I used to interview Jordan Spieth in Dallas, he would walk you through every single round, why he chose that iron, why it was that club. It was fascinating to me. That's Amari Cooper. So I think Amari is sort of, sort of the, the sly cat on this, mm -hmm. but I do believe they get that done specifically because Michael Thomas, we've already heard the Saints say, we're going to make him the highest paid receiver. We have no problem with that. We've seen that he's not reported to camp today. Do you, as the Cowboys organization, really want to wait and see what that number is before you pay Amari Cooper? I say get that one done pretty quick. Unless Amari's playing chess here and is like, okay, I'm I'm fine. Let's just see what Michael Thomas does first before I sign. You got, yeah, I know you guys are dealing with Dak, you know, and put the put the queen and try and checkmate. You know but what I'm saying? Seriously, have you heard one utterance about what Amari demand his no, demands are, zero. what he wants? I mean, that well, that's the way the Cowboys want it, though. Yes, right? he is a he is a fascinating player to me. This whole thing. I mean, to me, Dallas is set. That defense is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Okay? That defense, to me, last year, and I know this pisses Bears fans off and anybody else who thinks their defense is fast and, and dynamic. Dallas's defense last year was f the fastest defense I've seen in years with, with Lawrence up front. And now you got Robert Quinn. Robert Quinn is now involved, yes. Uh, you got Sean Lee to come back. So you got I mean, Sean Lee, Leighton Vanderish, Jalen Smith. I mean, it's sort of an embarrassment of riches. I think the biggest thing for them is going to be that safety position. Okay. They didn't address it with Earl Thomas. They feel like they've got some guys that can step up. And that, that's one of the positions I'm going to be watching at camp, just to see if they're looking at the waiver wire, if they're comfortable with that position. On defense, that to me is the only question mark. And it just, but it, they, so there's that. I guess this is my whole long way of setting up the fact that here we are again, where the Joneses just seem to... They kind of like the the buzz that's a little bit on the edge. They like the edge. Like, that's, can't we just sign everybody, including the coach, and just be normal here? Just be kind of normal. Just go in. Like, they could win the Super Bowl this year. This is a true fact. They made it here to Los Angeles to the second round of the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. They lose, obviously. But you could take another step. You win enough games in the regular season. People have to go to the Jones Mahal. And this is possible. If well, everybody and is happy play, and, and, and full pocketed, I would think. I thought one of their signature games was the way they played the Saints in Dallas. I mean, I think everyone thought they were going to get buried in that game. Oh, they hit them in the mouth. It was, and so when they galvanized like that, and and they've got such a young team, but I think what they were missing was some of that veteran leadership last year. So acquiring Randall Cobb, I think, is going to be huge for that offense. I Getting agree. Jason Witten back is going to be big. And I've I've said to a lot of people, 
They have quietly put together this roster that we haven't been talking about because we've been talking about Odell Beckham Jr. and Antonio Brown and the Raiders and Le'Veon Bell and the Jets. We haven't really talked about the Cowboys, and I think maybe that's a good thing finally. Jane Slater here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, Garrett, how come he doesn't get the credit? I'm serious. Like, again, you just mentioned that game against the Saints. Everybody was ready for the Saints to go ahead and steamroll yeah. the Cowboys, okay? Because he's that's all Jason does is clap. Right. That's the idea that's he's, Poor like, Jason. he's a clapper. He's such a different guy to away from the cameras. He what, really is. OK, give me give me something on that, Jane. What do you got for me when, on that? So he does these off the uh, it's it's a it's the walk off. And so that's when he's not on the podium and you sort of get real Jason Garrett. And you hear him say it from time to time. Well, that's a discussion over a bunch of lemonades. But he really is this really interesting, interested person. As a matter of fact, funny story about Jason I've got his number. I'll reach out from time to time. He will not return one text, one call. No matter what the situation is, if I'm giving a heads up about something coming down the pipe, don't hear from him. My dad and I went up to the facility to do a, a tour. My dad, obviously big Cowboys fan growing up in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And Jason spent probably 10, 15 minutes with my father. Mm -hmm. And I sent him this text message. I said, I really, really appreciate that. That meant a lot to me. I get this text message just... Mm -hmm. It meant so much to see you interacting with your dad. Now I get where you get your personality. And so I wrote back, so this is your number. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of the dynamic of our relationship. Right. But nice. he really, the reason why I say, everyone always says, well, they're, they're always a mediocrity. I'm like, well, they've only had one losing season under Jason Garrett. And the players speak pretty freely to me. And not one of them has thrown him under the bus. He continues to garner their respect, uh, their attention. You start hearing guys talk the way that, that he talks, Dak really respects him. Um, so I think that's the reason why Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones keep him around. They respect him too, but I think they just haven't had a better candidate. I mean, show me someone better that the Cowboys would potentially go after. I'd rather go with the devil that I know if I'm those guys than someone that I don't. Well, there is the head coach of the Saints that everybody keeps on <laughs> tying to Dallas, you know, and you're assuming he wants to leave all the autonomy that he has in New Orleans. Do you think he's going to have that in Dallas? Bill Parcells learned the hard way. I agree with you. I hear you. No, you're, you're, you, are, you are not wrong. I assume he wants a $10 million paycheck. Who? Sean Payton? Yeah. Oh, I think it's yeah. going to be higher than that. I think anywhere he goes, it's going to be higher than that. Certainly if the Saints win the Super Bowl this year. I think he starts can. with John Gruden numbers. Which is nuts. That's crazy. Yeah. So how, how does this play out, do you think? Give me, give me, give me the scenario for the Dallas Cowboys season, best you can tell, as you're heading up to Oxnard, California. I think, crystal ball it for me is what I'm saying, Jim. I think this is one of the most talented groups they've had since 2014, but I think that six-game stretch at the end of the season is going to be rough, where mm -hmm. they go Foxborough, they go Philadelphia, they go Chicago in the cold. That is a rough six-game stretch. Yeah, they need me, to win a lot on the front end and then split the difference on the back. Yeah, week 12 at New Orleans – then a Thursday nighter home for Buffalo. Okay. Oh, no, wait, that's Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. And then at Chicago the next week on Thursday night. Isn't that amazing? Dallas every year does that back to back where they have a Thursday nighter. It's rough. Because Chicago, let me make sure I can confirm this. Chicago's at Detroit on Thanksgiving, too. So that'll be a full complement of rest of a Thursday night football game. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Dallas at Chicago. That will be great. Home for the Rams at Philadelphia, home for Washington. That's And this is the first up. year in franchise history that they don't have back-to-back -back home games. So they're on the road every other week. That is true. So this is this will be a this will be a tricky season. But I think they've got the talent there. And I truly don't believe any of these contract issues are going to become a distraction. I just I believe that. They're, they they I, I did not, I, and I did the damn schedule show. Jane Slater, you are correct. <laughs> they are home, away, home, away, throughout, even home, then by, away. Yeah. They don't, they don't have two in a row anywhere. It's, so a, they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky schedule travel-wise, for sure. So Dak gets done. Amari is up in the air because he's playing chess, and we have no idea what's going on between his temples. And you think Zach, Zeke's on the plane later on today, and, and, or he's already here and he'll show up. 100%. Now, we'll see if my um, my old takes exposed show up on Twitter tomorrow. You know what? I'll, let me tell you this here. <laughs> the, the uh, I don't know who runs that. Do we know who runs that? It's a great account. And I, I, I'll say it here. And it's I'll great. say it on behalf of you. It's great. Jane. And I'll say it on behalf of anybody on the NFL Network, okay? Old takes exposed. Take out your pen and write it down. Who the hell cares? <laughs> It keeps me accountable, yeah, long, Rich. It long, keeps me accountable, Rich. Long, but as long as you, the old, and, and I, I say this with respect, 
but uh, as long as you give your opinion well based in facts and not just saying it just so you can get a click or just to do anything like so many other people in our industry do, that's your your opinion. And uh, look, I do take well informed, and it doesn't matter how old it is or freezing or whatever it is. Noted. Bring it. How's that? There you go. Strong. That's if I could drop the. It's it's attached to something. If I could drop the microphone, I would. But it's too expensive, and I have two more hours to do. People like to see people fail, though. Yeah, well, look, I can't end this conversation with something like that. That's too much. Of, that is way. <laughs> I just that, brought the that show is, down. That is way too much of a bummer. Uh, great job on Good Morning Football as Thank well. Thank you. I appreciate you bet. that. Absolutely. Love loved uh, loved seeing you doing that show, and that that show is just uh, on fire. It's so much fun. It is. It's a ton of fun. Uh, good luck with all your travels. Well, we'll be ringing you up to get some updates on the Cowboys throughout the season. Happy to do it. At Jane Slater, uh, at Jane Ashley Slater on Instagram. How come you can't get Jane Slater on Twitter? Believe it or not, Jane Slater is a very popular name in England. A lot of Jane Slater is very British, apparently. So when if I go over for a London game, I'm going to seek him out, and I'm just going to shake that thing loose for (laughs) you. There you go. By the way, we can we can make this happen. At Jane Slater on Twitter. Uh, five followers following one person <laughs> has, <laughs> has never tweeted. Just got to buy it. Got to buy so it. We can her. make, we can make this happen. Yeah. TJ, I think TJ is going to be the man for the job. Got Our it. social media czar, I think will be more than happy to take, to take James Sl- at Jane Slater out. But in, in the meantime, at Slater NFL. Good to see you. Thank you. You got it. Uh, Jane Slater will be seen later on on NFL network, uh, up the road in studio. And then in Oxnard later on today. For more of the Rich Eisen show, tune to audience channel 239 on direct TV for free on BR live or download the Rich Eisen show app.